What's going on everybody? Welcome to the 10th Python with Matplotlib for data visualization tutorial video. In this video we're going to be talking about some real basic customizations of this graph, mainly uh, rotating that the labels and the axes, but also how we actually start building uh, the actual subplot and the figure and all that. So uh, let's go ahead and just hop right in. First of all, when you're building graphs, there's really two two major ways that you can have multiple subplots and we'll be talking about those later on but for now we'll just use one of them also uh, implied when you make a graph is this uh, figure um, I'm gonna put fig equals plt dot figure here um, and that's just again that's just kind of like an, an, an implied thing you don't have to have it there but if you want to start modifying the figure you have to reference the figure somehow so that's how we do it so plt dot figure just are automatically already existed but this is how you can begin to modify it if you want now fig equals that and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna define ax1 a lot of people just say ax and then if they add more it's like ax2 and stuff I prefer to have like ax1 ax2 ax3 do whatever you want it's not a big deal so ax1 equals and then we're gonna say plt dot subplot to grid and this is just one of the ways where we can have many subplots for now we're just gonna have one but this the first like little pair here this first tuple is the shape of the grid basically it's a one by one okay and then the second tuple is the starting point of this uh, plot zero zero and then there's a few others here there's row span and column span we don't need it we're just doing a one by one here it's not necessary so uh, we're not going to really add anything else there now what we're going to do is now that we've got ax1 ax1 is what we plot to not plt so this is our first axis we're going to plot to that so instead of plt.plot we do ax1.plot so ax1 is a sub plot it's going to take up as much space as all the other plots that we've done it's just a subplot so when we have plt.x label and y label and all that uh, what's happening there is we can leave that there most likely that should be fine later on we'll talk about how you can have you know like if you've got multiple plots how do you put the labels there and all that we'll get to that uh, but for now mainly what we have to change <clears throat> is the is what we're plotting so we've got that now uh, let's go ahead and run that and make sure everything works up to this point before we do one more modification okay so everything's looking good the labels are where they want to be where we want them and all of that what we want to do now is rotate the dates here and if we rotate them slightly we could fit a lot more dates but also they'll pretty much never run over each other like they do like in this example okay so we want to rotate them and rotating them is not too bad it just takes a little modification but like I was telling you everything in matplotlib is customizable it's really uh, really well thought out so on ax1 we do this we do the plot uh, right underneath that we're gonna say uh, for label in ax1 dot x axes dot get underscore tick labels so this gets all those little objects that constitute these tick labels and then what we can do is we can modify them so label dot we can do label dot set underscore rotation rotation uh, and then we set the degrees of the rotation so we set them out of 45 degrees so that should be it's like a perfect slant um, so we're modifying each label as either like objects in these get tick labels and then we're using the set rotation method to set their uh, tilt basically another interesting thing that we can go ahead and show as well well let's let's bring this one up and then I'll show one more thing and then we'll close this one out so now they're like kind of tilted like that so that's pretty cool uh, so now we can zoom in and then we start finding oh, we got one more problem now so we're tilted they're not running over each other but dang it they're off the screen so, like I was saying before, to con we would use this configure subplots, and then we can see that, okay, well, let's see, they're falling off the bottom, so let's modify the bottom a little bit, give it a little more space, and that looks about good. So, really, the bottom needs to be 0 0.18, let's say. And then we could bring some of these other things over, but let's just do the bottom for now, or well, we'll do them all, I guess, but let's just close this out, and let's just let's start modifying those. So we close, 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 and coming down to, to basically the very, very bottom here. I usually do it, I tend to like keep everything clumped together. So uh, first, you know, you define your figure, you define all your axes, 
then you define your date or your data, sorry. Uh, so your data goes there and then you start defining everything that goes on to each individual subplot, which is your axes. So all the AX1 stuff will go here. And then if we have when and if we have AX2, you'll have a clump of AX2 stuff and AX3 and so on. So, uh, and then at the bottom, all the specific, you know, PLT stuff that's going to apply across the entire graph, you put that stuff down here. So we're going to do plt.subplots underscore adjust. And then in here we put all the parameters. Now, um, we'll just kind of throw some in here and we'll throw them all in here and then later on we can adjust them as needed. So we'll say left equals 0 0.9, bottom will be equal to 0 0.16, right will be equal to 0 0.94 and that needs to be right not right <laughs> then we got top 0 point top equals 0 0.95 w space equals uh for now we'll just do 0 0.2 and then h space equals zero uh we'll talk about that later but basically this and this we're not even going to see but once you have multiple figures it's like padding between the figures you got top padding and side padding that's what that is uh, so with that, the bottom, I think we said the bottom should be 18 actually. So we'll do 18 and the rest should be fine. So let's go ahead and run that now. What have we done? Okay. So the left is screwed up somehow. So, it's, uh, left 0 0.09. Try again. Okay. That was better. So uh, we were, we're kind of squishing the top a bit. That's okay. We'll bring that down. Um, and then like if we zoom in here, even with like full date, although uh, as we zoom in, we're still running out of space. So we could give the bottom maybe a little bit more. Let's do 20 and then top needed a little more space. Let's do top is uh, nine, three. Let's do that. See how that works out. Let's do nine, zero. Okay, and then let's zoom in a little bit. Okay, so that's good enough. Um, let's zoom into a time too, yeah. So everything else, that's all looking good. We've got the date, the time, the uh, titles fit, the labels are fitting, we're all good. The only other thing I wanna show is like, okay, so say we're, we're like, we're looking at prices, but we're like, okay, well, what's the price right here, right? We could put our mouse over that, I guess, and you can read in the bottom, um, the bottom right corner. You can see, okay, Y equals 190. But what if you just like want to visually look at that? Well, generally we have a grid, okay? So we can add a grid really simply uh, by doing, um, and we can add this by chart. So we would say ax1.grid. And then in here, we just put true. So we can save and run that and up pops a chart and it's got a grid. Now the grid can also be customized a lot like your lines that you might plot. So for example, we could say true, we could say color, and we can say the color is equal to G or green. We can also say line style equals, and instead of that dash, we could say it's a solid line. So let's run that one for now. Okay, so now it's this green grid. And then we could take it a step further in absurdity and we could say line width <laughs> equals five. <laughs> okay, so you can do all kinds of crazy stuff. Okay, with the grid, generally just grid equals true is good enough. So I'm just gonna close this off here and comment the rest of that out. But you can take note that you can do all these other things if you want. Um, along those same lines, I'm gonna go ahead and take this and get rid of all this wasted space. I'll save this for now and then um, probably we'll get rid of that line shortly. But anyways, so now we've customized the chart a little bit, obviously. We still have a long way to go in customization, but there's some basic starting points uh, for customizing and pulling data offline and getting a relatively okay looking chart, but we have a lot of other things to cover, I promise. So anyways, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, whatever, up until this point, please feel free to leave them below. Otherwise, as always, thanks for watching. Thanks for all the support and subscriptions. And until next time.